IELTS Writing Task 1, Lesson 5, Tables. You probably know this, but a table looks like this. You'll see down the left side and along the top, in the grey areas in this case, categories or items. This could be years, countries, almost any kind of item. And in the rest of the table, you'll see the numbers. Tables can show any kind of number millions, billions, percentages, money, etc. It's also important to remember that tables can show the same information as a line graph, bar chart or pie chart. So the information and the approach and method from the last three lessons that I've done will be relevant to this lesson. Everything we've learned about line graphs, bar charts and pie charts can be relevant for table descriptions too. Tables can also show comparisons, changes over time, like an increase or a decrease, and they can show a lot of information. In fact, often there is too much information in the table. You can't describe it all in 20 minutes and only 150 words. So this is a problem. And for that reason, a key skill is selecting which information to mention. And so, your job is to select, describe and compare the key numbers in the table. First, look for main or general features, and this is going to be for your summary or overview paragraph just after the introduction. And second, describe specific numbers. This will be in your details paragraphs, paragraphs 3 and 4. Let's look now at our table question for today. Here's the question. The table below shows statistics about the top five countries for international tourism in 2012 and 2013. Looking at the table, you can see on the left we've got countries. Then the next two columns we've got numbers of tourists in the two years, 2012 and 2013. So that's numbers of people in millions. And then in the final two columns, we've got tourist spending in those countries in those two different years. And that's in billions of dollars. As usual, we're going to try to write four paragraphs, an introduction, overview or summary, and two paragraphs of details. We don't write a conclusion, but you could put the overview at the end if you wanted. I prefer it as paragraph two. Let's start with the introduction then. The technique is to paraphrase the question. Just change some of the words in the question where you can. Here's the question again. The table below shows statistics about the top five countries for international tourism in 2012 and 2013. And we'll go through this question section by section, changing some of the words. Starting with the table below shows. I've changed that to the table compares. Then statistics about the top five countries. The five highest ranking countries in terms of. Then we have the words international tourism. I'm going to try to be a bit more precise and say what the figures for international tourism are. So I'm going to look at the table and circle these two headings, number of tourists and tourist spending. That's what the table's really about. So instead of international tourism, I've written the numbers of visits and the money spent by tourists. That's a bit more accurate. Finally, in 2012 and 2013, I've written over a period of two years. And that's the introduction finished. The table compares the five highest ranking countries in terms of the numbers of visits and the money spent by tourists over a period of two years. Now we can go on to the overview. Two sentences, two main points. So let's look at the table and find two main points to describe. I'm going to keep this one very simple and choose one main point about numbers of tourists, which will be France, the highest numbers, and one main point about tourist spending, which will be USA, the highest numbers. Easy. Let's see how I wrote that in my paragraph. First sentence, 
it is clear that France was the world's most popular tourist destination in the years 2012 and 2013. Next sentence. However, the USA earned by far the most revenue from tourism over the same period. That's the overview finished, nice and simple. And now we can move on to the details paragraphs, paragraphs 3 and 4. We'll start with paragraph 3 and we need to look at the table to decide what to mention in this paragraph. So here's the table again and I've just chosen to mention the numbers of tourists in this paragraph. I won't be able to describe all of those numbers because there's too many but I'll get some of them in this paragraph and I'll certainly start with the highest which is France and then I'll try and mention some of the others. Let's see which ones I did mention in my paragraph. Sentence 1 In 2012, 83 million tourists visited France and the USA was the second most visited country with 66.7 million tourists. Then, Spain and China each received just under 58 million visitors while Italy was ranked fifth with 46.4 million tourists. Last sentence. 2013 saw a rise of between 1 and 4 million tourist visits to each country, with the exception of China, which received 2 million fewer visitors than in the previous year. I've finished paragraph 3, and now I'm going to underline one or two key things in this paragraph. Firstly, remember that this whole paragraph was about numbers of tourists. Nothing about the spending yet, so tourists visited. This is all about these tourist numbers. We've also got two years in the table, so we had to mention both 2012 and 2013. And we have five countries, so I've mentioned all five. France, USA, Spain, China and Italy. That's paragraph three finished, so let's move on to paragraph four and do the same thing. We'll choose what to put first, and of course it has to be these spending columns. We'll mention as many of the numbers as we can. We can't mention all of them, but we'll certainly start with the highest number as usual. Let's see what I wrote in my paragraph. Spending by tourists visiting the USA increased from $126.2 billion in 2012 to $139.6 billion in 2013. And these figures were well over twice as high as those for any other country. So starting off with the highest numbers for the USA. Then, Spain received the second highest amounts of tourist revenue, rising from $56.3 billion to $60.4 billion, followed by France, China and Italy. Final sentence. Interestingly, despite falling numbers of tourists, Chinese revenue from tourism rose by $1.7 billion in 2013. That last sentence is nice because it links the numbers of tourist columns, which we talked about in paragraph 3, with the spending in paragraph 4. And there's a connection between those two things there. Whereas the Chinese numbers of tourists went down, the actual revenue, the income, or the spending went up a bit, and I've mentioned that there. So, as usual, I've tried to put three sentences in my details paragraphs. In this case, we had one big sentence about America, the USA, and then another sentence mentioning mainly Spain, but also France, China, and Italy at the end. And then we had that final or third sentence about China and the comparison with the numbers of tourists from paragraph 3, dropping, but the spending going up. And with that, the whole essay is finished, because we have no conclusion as usual. Before we move on to check the vocabulary, let's just look at this key skill of selecting information. Let's check to see which numbers were mentioned in the report. Back to the table, and we have to mention countries, and these categories at the top, the number of tourists and the tourist spending. So starting with numbers of tourists in 2012, I actually mentioned these three numbers. I mentioned these two numbers as an approximate number, um, just under 58 million. 
I didn't mention any of these four numbers, but I did say something general about that, the increase from the previous year of between one and four million. And I did mention, in a way, this number about China because I said that the number of tourists had fallen by two million. In the tourist spending columns, I mentioned these four numbers. And I also mentioned these statistics. I talked about the increase of $1.7 billion of spending in China. So remember that you can't mention every number. I chose around 10 out of the total 20 numbers in this table, and that's more than enough. If you've done somewhere between 6 and 10 numbers from a table as big as that, that's fine. We'll finish with our usual review of vocabulary from this report, focusing on paraphrasing, comparing and language for describing changes. So in my report I wrote five highest ranking countries. In this case the countries were ranked or listed in order. Which one is the top country, which one is the fifth? So that's a good phrase to use. I also wrote the world's most popular tourist destination earned by far the most. I often use this phrase, by far, by far the highest, by far the most. Revenue from tourism. So this, instead of saying spending, I've used revenue. That's the income from tourism. The second most visited country. Comparisons, as usual. Received visitors. You can say that a country received visitors. Ranked fifth. 2013 saw a rise of. If you've watched my previous video lessons, you'll know that I like to use this phrase with C. Um, you can say that with a country as well. You can say France saw a rise in number of tourists, or the year in this case, 2013 saw a rise of. Fewer visitors than in the previous year. These figures were well over twice as high as amounts of tourist revenue, despite falling numbers, and saw a rise, other change language, increased, rising from, rose by. If you've watched all of my writing task one lessons, you might have noticed that I tend to prefer just the four words, rise, fall, increase, and decrease. I don't choose any other strange words like plummet, saw or rocket for my descriptions. With those four words, rise, fall, increase, decrease, you've got enough because you can use them as nouns and as verbs and that gives you enough variety. Well that's the end of this lesson about tables. If you print the worksheet, watch the lesson again and analyse each sentence carefully, hopefully it'll help you to understand even better what we've studied today. In the next lesson, we'll look at two different charts, questions with maybe a line graph and a bar chart, or a pie chart and a table, two different types of charts together in the same question.